mean, I haven't said everything to those or those, though. Do we want to tell them everything? Yes! Yeah! Hey guys, Blazin here. So, Starbreeze released another dev diary covering the combat of Payday 3. I didn't cover the previous diaries because they were just talking about information that was already out there. However, in this one, there's some new stuff I like to talk about and give my opinions on them. So let's get straight to it. So when it comes to difficulties returning in Payday 3, there's Normal, Hard, Very Hard, and Overkill. Now when they describe Overkill, they make it sound like Overkill as like the new Death Wish, as they described it as unfair. Now the last time I played Payday 2, Overkill was kind of the standard difficulty for experienced players. Going to Mayhem and above, and especially Death Sentence, that's when the difficulty felt unfair. We'll see how the difficulty balances when we get our hands on the game, and as I saw, people found images that there's supposed to be a beta at some point, so we'll see. I also hope that later they do add Death Wish back into the game, as I really like that difficulty. Maybe they can keep the skull design and have the units in all black instead of the digital camo. Just a thought. Another thing they talk about is people selecting their own difficulties. At least that's what it sounds like to me. If that's the case, then that's good because now people can play with their friends who are new to Payday. Your newbie friends can play on normal, while you can play on very hard. They also mention that the health pools on the cops won't change when it comes to difficulties. Rather, their accuracy, damage output, and how much they will spawn on the map will vary. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. I think making the AI smarter rather than increasing their health pools is a good idea. Next thing they talk about is the overall health system, and there has been some changes. So armor still affects your movement speed depending on how much you have on you, but one big change to the armor system is the fact that it no longer fully regenerates. Instead, it now only partially regenerates divided by the blue bars down here. So if you lose one full bar of armor, that means that piece is gone forever. I don't think there aren't really any changes to the health. Personally, I think the armor shouldn't regen at all because that's already weird in the first place. I think there should just be one big blue bar that doesn't regen at all, and the health bar should be the one with partial regen, not the armor. Moving on, they talk about the cops we'll be fighting, and it seems like this time they've been split into three different categories instead of two, because in previous games there was just your standard enemies and your special enemies. There are common enemies, which are the ones with MP5s and pump action shotguns, Uncommon enemies, which include the shield and sniper unit. I guess the sniper wasn't that big of a threat anyways to be categorized as special, but the shield units, they made some interesting changes. So the shield guys are getting nerfed this game. Previously, these guys could get pretty aggressive, they carried one-handed SMGs, and were completely invincible from the front. Now, they carry pistols, there's now a small window to shoot through at the front, and they're now being treated more as a support role for the common cops. Apparently they upgraded the AI on the common enemies, where they will now understand that there's a shield on the field, and use him as mobile cover, which should be cool to see when I play the game. I kinda hope Starbreeze doesn't make the window to shoot through too easy, but we'll see how they balance that out when the game comes out. And finally, we have the special units which we're familiar with, and one new one. We got the Bulldozer, Zapper, which is the Taser, I don't know why they changed the name, Cloaker, and the Nader, which is the new special. Bulldozers now carry fully automatic shotguns, they can also now tackle, which is called Bull Rush, very fitting, and they can kick your ass now too. Zappers, which are the Tasers, I don't know if I'm going to call them that, but now when you get stunned, uh, there's now an initial stun state, like a partial stun state. So you can still shoot accurately for a moment before you go into full stun. Cloakers have a new thing they can do now, where they can burn your deployable equipment off the map by pouring acid on it if you leave your equipment unintended for too long. What an asshole. And finally, let's talk about the Nader. These are new special enemies that utilize old stuff we've encountered before. So basically, there is now an enemy type that we can shoot at who is responsible for throwing tear gas and flashbangs at us. This time though, when we are within the tear gas, we cannot sprint, so we'll see how dangerous that'll be. 
And I should also mention, the gas this time will deal damage directly to your health. In Payday 2, I remember it did damage to your armor first and then health, which doesn't make any sense in the first place, so I'm all for this change. And that's it for the enemies. Overall, I think Starbreeze is doing a very good job with them, and I can't wait to play against them. Now, for my favorite part. Let's talk about weapons. Now I did take a closer look at this screen here, so we can see what we're getting when the game comes out. So it looks like we got our standard M4, AK-47, this one I'm honestly not sure, maybe an HK-33, I don't know, the SCAR-H, an M14, some sort of sniper, I don't know what it is. This one though I think is that one sniper with a the thermal scope, and the revolving grenade launcher. For pistols, looks like a P226, and this one is kind of hard to tell from this angle. Weapon customization is not changing. It seems exactly like Payday 2, so that's good. This time, however, each weapon is going to have their own progression, kind of like Modern Warfare 3. There's going to be pre-configured weapons for us to try out, and they will have unique skins on them. I see they're taking inspiration from Modern Warfare 2019. Except this time, it's better, because we don't have to pay for that shit. Honestly, this might be a good thing for people who aren't sure how to customize their guns yet and can use something pre-made for them. Another thing to mention is that the spray patterns, from full auto weapons in particular, seems like they're going to have a predictable recoil system. I'm thinking of something like Black Ops 4. That game also had a predictable spray pattern, so we'll see how that plays out. Next thing to talk about is the overkill weapon system. So through this system, this is going to be the way we can essentially get power weapons. So far, they have the rotating grenade launcher and a high-powered sniper with a thermal scope. This will be a great opportunity to add back in the RPG and minigun from the Payday 2 Overkill pack. Maybe even a China Lake or even a Thumper would be cool too. I'm still unsure how that works though. I mean, does everyone share that progress bar? Uh, together, or is it separate? Next thing they go over is some stealth equipment. So the ECM jammer is back, and it's small as hell. It still jams cameras and all comms. There's also a mini camera that you can throw onto a guard's back. Pretty cool. And we also got a quick shot of a throwing knife. And that is it for this video. Overall, this game is looking pretty good so far. Uh, I know I'm kind of late to covering it, but fuck it. I'm excited for Payday 3, and I am looking forward to this game. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you enjoy the content on this channel, and links to my shit are down in the description. And until next time, peace.